that I have Tourette's before they hop in so they don't be abusive or misunderstand. Um, but it's not the reason why I like to stream. So if you want to ask me a deep question, let's do this because I love those kind of conversations. How to appro approach a career. Okay, so I definitely, I definitely have stuff to say about that. Chicken, put your ass on Twitter. Um, so basically, I didn't have much of a formal education. Um, so when I, and I was caring for my mom, I didn't have enough time to work and I didn't know how to get employed because when you spank people's asses and shout racial slurs, it's incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult to breakfast, to get employed. Um, because if I try to stack shelves or whatever, I'm gonna get in trouble so many times with the public. I'm just a liability. So, I was like, fuck, will I ever have a job or will I just have to live off, um, government assistant mon assistance money for being disabled? And I hoped not, because I want it to be independent. So what I did was, I, um, to unwind and get out of the house, I would collect sea glass. And I loved doing it, it became a hobby. Google sea glass, if you don't know what it is, sea glass. You know, sea is in ocean, glass. Um, so I started collecting that as a hobby, and then I looked online and found out that you could buy it, and I had loads of rare stuff that I'd found, and I knew the history behind it and everything. So I started selling it, and I saved up the money from selling sea glass, which I found for free. And I bought stock for an art shop with it, so I, I sold craft supplies, and my angle, that helped me to be competitive was I knew as an animator I knew what stuff was rare and difficult to find so I started buying that because I knew that people would snap it up no matter what price I charged for it um so I, I supplied niche markets and that's what I did and um breakfast um so I did what I loved and then I found a way to monetize it and that way it felt good to get up and get ready for work every morning because I get to spend it by the sea taking in the wildlife and picking up things that I'm really passionate about and really enjoy finding. And then supplying people with stuff I really enjoyed being knowledgeable and feeling capable and interacting with people who were doing the same career path that I'd aimed for. So like everything about what I loved was incorporated into my work. When you look for a career, do what you love first, hone your skill at it, feel comfortable, and then find a way to supply people by doing it. Um, whether it's artwork or gaming or, you know, no, it doesn't matter what your hobby is, train spying, whatever, there's a way to monetize it now. So find what you love first and then make it your job after. And this is something, you can find hobbies and things that you're passionate about bleh, um, whilst you're working a job that you hate. So it's not something that you can ever close yourself off to and it's never too fucking late. I have an uncle, he fucked me. Um, I have an uncle who didn't, wow, who, who started working on his dream job when he was 40 something, because like 49, he started training and in his 50s he became what, what he'd always aspired to be. Um, so it's never too late um, to take up education and you can study again. Like you might fall in love with the first thing you studied, that's okay. Um, that was a chapter in your life, you got to be passionate about something, it's not a failing to drop it and try something new. Um, looking back on your life and it having loads of different interesting aspects is cool. My mom was a dancer, an artist, a scientist, a photographer, um, a kickboxing champion, a marathon runner. She was so many things. And she doesn't feel like a failure because she didn't stick to it her whole life. She, and I, everyone thinks she's really accomplished because she had and tried lots of diff different things. So it's never too late to try something new and do the thing you're passionate about. Um, if you've fallen out of love with what you're doing right now, that's not a failing, that's just growth. But don't keep looking for happiness in the same place you lost it. If you dread going to work every day, if you dread waking up next to that same person, it's okay to leave and start again. It's okay to chase your happiness. Because the more beauty you bring to yourself, the more beauty you have to offer the world. Um, so it doesn't just benefit you, it benefits everyone around you. If you have kids, show them like how to be passionate. Show them how to love, show them how to be happy. That's just as important as providing for them. So it's okay to care for yourself, take a new interest in things, and you know, to start following your dreams. Good luck. For those of you saying it's easier said than done, stop disguising your fear as pragmatism. Yes, it's going to be challenging. Yes, it's scary. Yes, there are things to lose if you drop everything you have now 
to try something that might be fun or might be beautiful. But if you've never tried, you've already fucking failed. And you risk more by never risking anything at all. Okay, so if you commit yourself to a life of depression, sadness, where you groan when you get out of bed because you don't want to be where you're going to be when you're out of it, you've already lost. Why are you fearing losing anything when you've already lost your happiness? And that's what's most important. So yeah, it's hard. Everything worth having is hard. All the best things are lying out there waiting just outside your comfort zone. Fossil watches this video. Chat won and has to delete all with emotes and no longer accept with songs. <laughs>